Okay, we are getting ready to lash the rim, and that's where you wrap it. And this is actually probably the most important part of the basket because it's what's gonna keep the basket together. So you wanna make sure you're getting it good and tight. You don't wanna break your reed. There's a lot of different things that you have to consider. I'm gonna be using, I've just pulled it out of the water, some 3 16th flat. I have it drying on my towel because it gets drippy and I can actually get rid of my towel when I'm done with that. Since this is a smaller basket, there is a, a way to, that I just learned, to lash a basket which shows very little of the pieces So when you're finished. So you need to find the right and the wrong side and the thinner it gets, the harder it is to tell. I think this is probably the right side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually have um, the right side um, facing in towards a basket. The wrong side is gonna be facing out for right now. And what you're going to do, and I'm going to start just a little bit away from my um, start place on the outside. So there's where I started. All right. Now what you're going to do, it's a little tricky with a smaller basket, but you don't need as much reed. So with the wrong side facing me, I'm going to take this piece. And actually, if you put your, your um, all in, so it pushes the, um, the seagrass out of the way. I'm trying to do this so I can show you, but it's a little tricky, so I'll do my best here. Um, you're gonna take it up through the spoke, straight up, oh, goodness, and it's gonna, it needs to come under the rim. You pull it up just a little bit, it doesn't have to be too much, so you got like a little dog leg there type of thing. And then you're gonna take that end, and you're gonna put it, you might, you might need it all, it depends on how tight things are right now, gonna need one and you're gonna literally put it behind so you're gonna go over the middle part and now you went behind the rim on the inside now you're gonna go behind the rim on the outside and then you've got this little tail you pull that tight and you've got this little tail hanging out here which we're gonna take care of when we're completely done but no matter how hard you pull that is not going to go anywhere. It is good and tight. Um, I really like this way, except you're working with a really, really long piece of reed. It's important that it stays wet. Um, you don't want to dry out too much because it'll start to fray. It could break um, and whatnot. So the one thing I like about it, though, is I only go one direction. I really don't like it com coming from the inside of my basket to the outside. So this way, I can do it like this. So... <clears throat> You can see it, things have raised a little bit. It's kind of come up a little, and that's okay. That's very normal. My last row of weaver is what's going to be hidden. And this is helpful because I have four rows of quarter inch, which I know are my what I want to show. So in between every spoke that's going down, there's a spot. And what you do, I'm going to use my fit, actually, because it's flat, but an all will work. What you do is you get in between those two spokes, and I'm a tight weaver, so... I have pretty tight spaces, so I have to create an opening. So I take my all my fit and I create an opening. I don't know if you can see it right there. And then, and I, you won't see it, but I actually use my mouth to hold my reed too to keep it going. But what I do is I slide my fingers down it because it helps to keep it untangled because that's the biggest problem. If you want to, when you get to the end, cut a bit of a point here. It helps it get through easier. But you're gonna take it from the front between that little spot where you put it, and you're gonna pull. And when you pull, you pull gently from the inside. Don't pull big big pieces of it. I keep my finger here to keep it tight here, and I do little pulls right here. When I get to the end, I kind of pull it like this. I put my thumb on it, and I gently tug like this to make it really, really tight. It'll come at a bit of an angle. Don't worry about this piece, we'll get it later. It comes at a bit of an angle. It's important for this first one and the ones that follow to put a clothespin on that one. Actually, I could have used this one uh, because it keeps it tight. So my next space above my four rows and under that last row of weavers, the rim row actually, is right here. So I'm going to make my hole. There's my, my gap. I'm going to take my piece, slide it through my fingers. And this is why you need to keep wetting it because this dries it out pretty quickly. Take that end. I made sure it didn't twist through that hole and I, you kind of have to watch to make sure that your piece doesn't go through so you may want to pull to the right keep your loop to the left 
pull gently. When you get closer to the edge, then you can take your thumb and I push it really tight against the reed and pull it back here. Pull it close, close to the basket. If you pull too far, it's going to break for sure. Okay, that close pin that was right here, you're gonna move it to the next one to keep it in place. Sometimes your room will pop. Just pop it, clip it right back in again. All right, so I'm working now with my with my overlap piece and where I cut it at an angle. Sometimes it works to catch it, sometimes it doesn't. This one is not gonna catch it. It's okay, it's not gonna go anywhere. So here's my two next spokes. Here's my space or lack of space that I need to create with my awl. And don't worry about smashing it and making it go flat because it's wet. When it dries, it'll all go back to the flat pieces that it was. So work your way down the reed, put that in. Get the tail to the right, the loop to the left. Get out of your way. Pull close to the basket, little tugs. Okay, when you get close. Mm, uh, I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll try. I don't think it'll stay. Put your thumb on it to hold it. Tug tight, oh, it wasn't too bad. Tug tight on here. Before you let go with it, slip your, it's gonna be a little tight because it's the end. Clip your clothespin over. So what we're gonna do is just keep going through every spoke, between every spoke below that rim row and above the last row of weavers, make your spot. If you make it well enough, you don't have to worry about um, keeping your all in there, you can take it out. And it, But if it's really snug, you can always just leave it in there a little bit and pull it out as you push it in. Again, loop to the left, tail to the right. Just keep pulling. Sorry, I got it out of the view there. Oops clothespin in the way. If it twists, you might be able to twist it, but if you have really tight, a really tight weaver, like this would be a hard place for me to twist it, I'd have to pull it, probably pull it out and start over again. Get it close. I pull it down here, get my thumb on it, and pull snugly. Before I go too far, I move the clothespin over. So I'm just going to work my way. Sorry, I keep taking it out of view with because it's sliding pretty easily over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and Try to do this as quickly as I can. Because this is a smaller basket, you might not have to re-wet your reed more than once. But if it's a larger basket, number one, it's gonna be a much longer piece of reed and it's gonna get very, very frustrating. Um, so, eh, you know, I don't know. I'm doing this without using my my mouse. You can see it working, so <laughs> I'm out of my comfort zone here. Um, stepping out of my box a little bit. Remember to before you move with this one, take this off and move it over. Just keeps that last one you just made nice and snug, and you don't have to worry about. It coming undone. Like I said, this is very important. This rim, keeping this rim tight is extremely important for your whole basket. That's just a good habit to get into to move that clothespin before you do anything else. Probably the one step a lot of ladies forget the most when we make a basket. And actually in hindsight, when I put the seagrass on in the other video, I probably should have put it on the side where I was starting because that's where I started to do my wrapping, uh, my lashing. Um, and that way I could have made sure the ends budding were not so um, not so difficult to do, but I think we're going to be okay here. You can always do it at the end also. It's not a big deal. Um, sometimes you can kind of see where it's going to work when you get there and you just put it in. Okay. I'm going to kind of do this as quick as I can. I think after this one, I'm going to go ahead and, and soak my tail a little bit. Give it a little bit of chance to not get dried out. 
And you can see that they fall back a little bit. There's a little bit of a slope to them. One nice thing about this one, what I do is I just take this and just kind of twirl it. And you're not gonna see me do this, but I just kind of swish it in the water a little bit. And then bring it back out again. It doesn't take long. Um, close to that next clothespin. So if it feels a little snug, and that, of course that's holding the end, but that's okay. You can always come to here. Just watch for twists, catching clothes, the clothespin that's there, you know, as you're bringing them in. It's just a little bit of a of a dance that you have to sort of perform with the reed. I'm gonna kind of keep that out of my way for a bit because I don't want to include that in just yet. And if you look here, you can see that my rim row is still sticking out below. Don't, don't worry about that. As long as you go above the last row of weavers and below the rim row, you're gonna be fine. That this, um, this piece of lashing that I'm doing right now is what will pull everything together and help it to look exactly like it's supposed to look. Okay, so now, get this over, now I'm where the two ends of the seagrass are. And I can, I'm gonna get that out of the way still, and I can kind of see that right there, I'm still gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna continue as if that other end is not even there yet. And you can see I'm a really tight weaver. Oh, gosh, if you're not a tight weaver, this will be a whole lot easier for you. Oops, I was, going, I was catching the rim row, no wonder. Just be careful when you stick your awl or, or fit or double, double needles, whatever you have. Just be careful you don't go through and split. Yeah, make sure you're catching. Oops, I didn't catch that piece there. Make sure you're catching the end in here. Okay, I can see, you see what I did here? This is a good time to catch a mistake. I forgot to catch my end when I did this loop. So I'm gonna just take it back. You can actually put the clothespin back on the previous one and then put this back in place underneath that piece and then just kind of pull it tight. That's better. There we go. And now move it over and then just continue with this one. I've got a twist in it, so I was able to kind of work my twist out a little bit. All right, so that's the very end of my of my seagrass on this end, and I actually think that's going to be a really good place to butt it together. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that the rest of it is okay. I'm going to kind of eyeball where I think the end of it would be and snip off the extra. And it's kind of laid in there and it looks like it might be a little long and that's okay I can always adjust it you know as I go it's better to be a little long than a little short because then you'll definitely see a gap okay perfect and you want to kind of make sure that they're evenly spaced apart sometimes they want to get a little closer together this one's not leaning back quite as far because it's on that bumpy part Pull it nice and tight, and then make it kind of go the distance you want it to be. Now, of course, you can imagine that doing this between every spoke of a large basket could take some time. And you can imagine that the piece of reed you're using is much, much longer. There is another way to do a lashing of a rim with a really long piece. Um, it is much more easy to manipulate the reed. You will see more of it, but it serves the exact same purpose as what I'm doing right now. So I highly recommend this lashing type for small baskets. And if you don't mind working with a lot of reed, um, then I'll show you the other one in the tutorial for large baskets so you don't have to fight with all that extra extra stuff. Get rid of that clothespin. Get 
close to the end. It's a little bit easier to manipulate when you get to the, you know, the end is, is coming and you're not working with quite as much length. And just keep pushing it. It's very important that when you pull it, you don't pull it way up here because it could break. You keep your thumb to help put it on here and you use your pulling to the close to the back, inside of the basket. If you find that this end starts to fray or bend and it's just really hard to work with, you can just cut it at an angle again and lose some of it. It really, it really won't hurt. There's a lot of extra on this one. So don't worry if it's all mushy and because you've been trying to get through tight spots if you're a tight weaver. Being a tight weaver is not a bad thing. It makes a really nice finished basket, but it does finishing it could be a little tricky. So I'm on my last spoke here, my last hole, I should say. Now, I'm gonna do exactly what I did to start with. But it's a little trickier because getting the sea, under the seagrass is a little tricky. So, what I try to do is lift it if I can with an awl or my fit or something kind of like this. So it's kind of up and away from the edge a little bit. It's hard sometimes, but it's okay. And then, just like when we started on the inside, can do this um, well, I, might, I might just do it like this so you're gonna do the exact same thing you did before I'll try to show you this angle and I've got my fit in the way so it's gonna be a bit of an issue but I'm gonna move the clothespin just a hair so you're gonna bring it behind it's really gonna be hard to show you this because this is a very tricky a tricky angle you're gonna bring it behind the rim if I can get it there so it's kind of coming around itself. I'll tell you what, this is bending on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Make it a little bit easier for me. So I'm actually kind of bringing it back around itself. So I'm gonna come behind the rim. And if you wanna pull it the whole way through, you can. Just work on your, it's gonna twist a little bit here for me. So I may have to, See if I need to pull it out or if I can make it work. Sometimes you just have to play with a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I've got it underneath here. Now it's gonna have to come through the, the seagrass and then back under. I don't need to work with that much length, so I'm gonna cut it off. So I'm not working with that quite, quite that much. So here's where you can just kind of lift it here, thread it through the seagrass. And sometimes it's easy just to kind of do one little step at a time rather than trying to do it under both the seagrass and then, then underneath the rim in the front it's just easier so there it's under the seagrass in the front now and now what i want to do is take it down through this just just the just the rim piece i'll see if that works a little better for me here and you take it down through the rim piece so it sticks out the bottom just like you did when you started pull that you might have to finagle a little bit to get it to, sometimes they tend to bend when they're this tight. And you can just kind of push it up a little bit and you might have to use your fingers to, to make it work. There you go, okay? So you've got the two, the two ends sticking out right here, okay? One is much longer than the other. And basically, this basket's not going anywhere now. It's good and tight, you can see it's pretty evenly spaced apart. You can do a little manipulating. What's still wet, you can still kind of manipulate it a little bit. And now what you're gonna do, kind of like you did when you were cutting the tops off, you're gonna lean your, as close as you can get, and this one you might not be able to get to the fulcrum, but what you're gonna do, and you have to hack a little bit, you can, it's okay. Um, just take this as close to the bottom of the room as you can and just give it a snip. I would recommend when you start, you would give yourself a little more than this end here, but this will work. And then it's just a tiny bit that shows. I don't know if you can hardly see them at all. But what you can do is just kind of push the rim back down a little bit. 
And now I don't think you can, oops, see where those ends are at all, can you? I know I can't. So, so there you go. There's your finished basket. Love the rainbow colors.